Hi there. This is the Women's Eye Podcast, and I'm your host, Stacey Galandi. Happy Women's History Month. The Women's Eye is all about showcasing women supporting women, especially those who can help us all build your money power. This episode of our Building Money Power series is brought to you by Casco Financial Group in Phoenix, Arizona. Casco's president, Catherine Scrivano, started her business to help people create the financial strength to achieve their dreams. And I am really happy to be back with you, Catherine, right here on the pod. How are you? I'm terrific. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, this is so great because, you know, whenever you're here, you always have fantastic financial tips and advice for all of our listeners, including me. And then today, you're going to help us understand the different types of financial mindsets when it comes to investing and saving. And uh, there are four. So why don't you list the four and then we're going to we're, we're going to go deep dive into each of those different mindsets, because I definitely want to know which one I am. <laughs> yeah, let, let's do Well, you don't you're not limited to one. You can have all four of these represented. Uh -huh. uh, but it's, it's about attitude, like so many things in our lives. But when we're talking about financial decision making, uh, having the mindset of high optimism versus low optimism, okay. uh, future orientation rather than current orientation, thinking about right now, a reward orientation versus a risk orientation, and financial literacy versus financial illiteracy. Those who are proficient in those four uh, mindsets tend to have better results. So it's certainly worth talking about and exploring. I know, because I, I I feel like I might fall into the, I try to be highly optimistic all the time, um, but what, what are the characteristics for someone who has a very, you know, um, positive attitude with, with regard to their finances? Yeah, you know, people with high optimism, tend to be more proactive. Uh, they're anxious to save, um, actively change investments when it's time to do that. I think the real trick, um, the, the big key to success uh, for a person with high optimism is that they see opportunity. Uh, if you see volatility in markets, a person with low optimism may say, oh, gee, things are bad, things are going down person with high optimism may say, oh boy, things are on sale. I'm going to go shopping. <laughs> so that's the time to be buying. Obviously we want to buy low and sell high, but it takes that optimism to be able to buy when others are selling. They're the ones who tend to prevail though. So rather than looking at a statement saying, gee, I lost this much money, even if the loss is only on paper, a person with high optimism is going to say, oh, gee, I can be accumulating more shares at a lower price. When the market inevitably comes back, I'm going to be able to prosper as a result. You know, if you've got a Debbie Downer, um, <laughs> are you able to help change that person's mindset? To I, be you know, in, in many years of experience, to be honest with you, I would say, yes, we've made huge strides and influenced an awful lot of people as a result of experience because it takes some time. They have to go through those cycles and see the benefits of having continued to save even when uh, markets were down and headlines were gloomy, because those are, again, the time when, uh, you know, there's really no other time when things are on sale that I want to buy that I might sit on the sideline and, and be sad about it and not see the opportunity. Uh, some people are just hardwired to see the glasses half full and full of you know, half full of something they didn't want to drink anyway. And there's not a lot we can do with those folks. But again, having the experience, the positive experience inevitably lets people understand what a great opportunity market volatility can be for them and pat themselves on the back when they go through it. Do you see more people with the positive versus negative or the high versus low? I, I honestly feel like our practice is made up mostly of people with high optimism. And again, that's from many years of experience. So we have the experience that we can show them um, charts and graphs and historical references. And as our clients mature and they have the uh, lifetime experience, again, investing and planning and seeing the results of sticking to the plan. Uh, yeah, I, I would say most of our folks are pretty optimistic. 
Now, what about um, those of us? I mean, are we all uh, future orientated? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I think perhaps maybe the younger you are, the more you need to ad adopt that sort of mindset. A absolutely. You know, so often uh, we work with people who at some point say, gee, if I'd only had this information when I was younger and frankly, uh, you know, young people have a tendency to think long term is really next weekend. You know, what are the plans for for a couple Fridays from now? Uh, as we get older and mature, though, we are more likely to be responsive to the idea of a future orientation and recognizing that having good savings behavior right now, avoiding impulse spending um, and uh, the phrase retail therapy makes me crazy. I, I talked to so many people who say I had a bad day, therefore I went shopping. Um, you know, Which if your bad day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on a one person uh, quest to eliminate that, that uh, concept of retail therapy, because it generally is negative. Yeah, you feel better today, and then your credit card bill comes in three weeks. And once again, you feel bad. What are you going to do? Go shopping again? So that that orientation of self and instant gratification versus saying, I may have to make some sacrifices now. I may have to deny myself a short-term impulse or uh, maybe even compromise, buy something less expensive or go out to eat less often. Whatever those little things are, uh, over time, you see the results and you can reward yourself for having done that and having the discipline. But personally, I think it's almost a matter of experience and maturity as it is about any great financial strategy. Yes, because definitely that mindset, I feel for myself, has has creeped in. Certainly the older I've gotten, you know, where you start to think, oh, you know, like long-term insurance or, you know, all those kinds of things, yeah. but also, you know, buying stocks versus um, annuities or all those kinds of things. And all kind of depends on where you start from and it's never too late, right? To, to yeah. start. And, and if you look at those around you, uh, I, I always admire folks who actively look for mentors or uh, ask people who are successful how they got that way, you know, what, what life lessons they've learned and perhaps looking at people who are not successful and saying, gee, what, what did you experience? And I can avoid learning it the hard way. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, another one is, I'm not sure I know about this uh, is called reward orientation. Mm -hmm. So what, what does that mean? Uh, like you're trying to set yeah. yourself up for rewards, I guess, all the time. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to a uh, risk orientation. So ah. someone with a, a strong risk orientation is going to approach an opportunity and say, okay, what can go wrong? And they may talk themselves out of even participating because of all the potential pitfalls where someone with a reward orientation is more likely to approach that opportunity and say, what can go right? And what are the consequences if, if it goes wrong, you know, can I recover? Um, but just looking for the opportunity and being proactive um, and acknowledging that risks are not just limited to the numbers. The risk may be that you don't achieve your goals. You don't accomplish what you want to. Um, or as we talk about long-term planning, the risk of not maintaining purchasing power so that you're in retirement, you've stopped working, you're not getting those increases, but uh, prices are certainly going up. And often costs are very high in retirement because of healthcare issues. So again, saying there's an opportunity here, yes, it may go badly and it may go well. So mm -hmm. let's be thoughtful and explore it mm -hmm. um, rather than turn away from it because of fear. Yeah, it's all it's always that sort of risk assessment, but don't let it uh, don't let your fears, I guess, interfere with what could potentially be, um, you know, a, a very successful transaction or well, investment. Yeah, I mean, sometimes a, a risk orientation is appropriate. You you mm -hmm. don't want to to take risks that you can't afford to take. I mean, that's the the first rule of financial planning. Uh, but don't let your fear of loss keep you from exploring options and opportunities. You may decide not to pursue it all the way, but just that fear of loss keeping you from even looking at it, that can definitely work against you. 
Yeah. It's like, you know, coming up against that wall. Um, <laughs> this one's kind of funny because I don't know, maybe I don't give myself enough credit, but it's financial literacy. I feel like, you know, it, y you can learn, you just have to apply yourself, but, uh -huh. um, um, yeah. Is that something that you're always trying to encourage people to become more financially literate? A absolutely. I'm absolutely passionate about this. Um, our, the financial field, like the healthcare field, like so many others are full, so full of jargon. And I think it's just critical that we uh, undertake a field that is not ours, you know, maybe our area of expertise. Let's learn that jargon. Let's learn what uh, conversations and context are important to our lives. Uh, it's very easy to get an awful lot of information, but <laughs> um, knowledge is quite different. So being able to weed through all of the noise and seeing what information applies to our circumstances make going to make all the difference. I mean, is something, um, I guess, just the jargon, just in terms of financial planning and retirement planning, and those are uh -huh. kind of the basics, I guess, right? Yeah, it really is. But, uh, you know, they've been a little bit constrict conscripted by product salespeople. So uh, nobody sells insurance or investments anymore. They're all financial planners. Um, as a real financial planner, I want to tell you that a financial plan is like a roadmap. And you're going to be strategic. You, you know, funding it is starting the car and tracking your progress is the turn by turn directions. <laughs> and so hopefully you'll reach your destination on schedule, but you really need the plan before you start thinking about the products and the implementation. Absolutely. Uh, I you, mean, you, how is a lot of this um, applied to, because yeah, I know you love like food and that kind of thing, but how, <laughs> we always somehow me? get there, don't we? <laughs> but um, yeah, how, how you know, in simplified terms, I guess, for somebody kind of just getting into this financial world, what, what would you kind of compare it to, do you think? Well, yeah, uh, uh, you know me, I always love to talk about eating and cooking and I, I can, uh, I, I kind of think about this in terms of costs and use of resources. Uh, if you're a great cook and you'd like to go to the grocery store, buy each individual item, pay for them individually, come home and prepare the meal yourself, you could probably create something wonderful and you'll save some money versus alternatives like spending a little more and purchasing a meal kit. And that meal kit has all the ingredients, you assemble it and cook it. Or you may prefer to just go to a great chef, um, experience their menu, let yeah. them prepare and serve. And you're in all three of these, the potential for successful meal is certainly there. Uh, each one of those is increasing in cost. You have to determine if you're getting value. Gotcha. You know, um, Somebody, it's possible for somebody to have all four of these mindsets, right? Oh, absolutely. Gotcha. Certainly. I, I think we all move in and out of them and it may be different on, on each given day. I'm such a proponent of optimism, but certainly I get up on the wrong side of the bed sometimes too. <laughs> yeah. The value of a professional relationship, I think, is someone to talk to and talk through these things. I often tell clients, please tell me what you're thinking of doing, not what you've done. And we can talk through the thinking of, uh, you know, ideas that you might have or something that's been presented to you. Let's talk through it, see if it's appropriate for you. If so, you can enjoy it and have great confidence. If not, sometimes it's hard to unwind decisions that have been made on impulse or when we were hungry. Uh, you know, I, I always tell you I can't go grocery shopping when I'm hungry because I can't afford to grocery shop when I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> Throwing a piece of uh, bread in the toaster and eating as I drive is a great way to save money for me. I think that's awesome. And well, and also too, with these mindsets, why are they so important though, when it comes to having successful outcomes? Is it sort of one automatically leads to the other? I, well, I, th I think if we know what our tendencies are, we can be have an awareness and be respectful of them. I, I don't want to uh, judge or uh, be dismissive of where anyone's at, but if it's not serving you, 
then perhaps it's not the decision that is the issue, it's the mindset that you're bringing to the decision. And being aware of that and perhaps working on ways to uh, to change them or adapt to them. My piece of toast before the grocery store is a great analogy, just knowing <laughs> what, what your weaknesses are and what your strengths are and play to those strengths and figure out ways to uh, work around the weaknesses. But it's just really a matter of knowing thyself, I think. So Catherine, so why why is it so important to understand why having these four mindsets will will ultimately help you with your financial outcomes? Why is that so important? Oh. I, I feel as if an awareness of the four uh, gives us a basis from which to make decisions. So if we, uh, you know, we're not the same every day. I promise you, I know that I get out on the wrong side of the bed sometimes and uh, my optimism is not what it should be. But having that awareness might make me postpone a decision <laughs> until I'm feeling a little bit more myself, just having the frame of reference. And I think that the value of a relationship with a financial professional um, can help you have those conversations with them. And you can kind of test your circumstance, your decision-making at the, at the time and making sure that it's consistent with your experience and your plans. So to, to recap, um, having an awareness of where we are is going to give us more or less confidence in the decisions we make to get where we're going. I think that's fantastic. And then also it's the, you know, understanding that high optimism, uh, I'm going to look at my notes, future orientation, reward orientation, and financial literacy, those four mindsets, it's, you know, if we can achieve some or all, um, then you're, you're on the path to, um, some some financial freedom, I suppose. Well, there, there's great research and statistics that support the idea that those who master those mindsets are more likely to succeed than those who don't. It's really that simple. So Wonderful. it's certainly worthwhile, certainly worth doing. Yep. So I'm going to be forward thinking positive, try to reward myself. And I need to get a little bit more literate when it comes to <laughs> my finances. But well, Catherine, thank you so much for all these wonderful tips. Um, it's always so, so valuable. I really appreciate it. And uh, for more fun financial facts and to find out more about Catherine Scrivano, you just go right to thewomenseye.com. And on our website, you'll also find some books that we have. We uh, have 20 Women Change Makers and 20 Women Storytellers. Just find them right where you buy uh, where you buy your books and right on the womenseye.com website. And don't forget, subscribe to our newsletter and also our YouTube channel. You'll have have, uh, you'll enjoy yourselves again. Thank you, Catherine. Thank and you to safely. all, we'll see you soon. And to all of you for tuning in to the Women's Eye podcast. Keep building your money power. I'm Stacey Galandi. Remember, it's the world as we see it.